This video and its contents are for adult collectors. Guys, it's time. There's only so many releases left in this year, so we're gonna go through my top 15 pickups of 2024. 15 because there was a lot of stuff that came out this year. I'd also like to say that these first few are in no particular order, but when we get to the top five, it, it is in fact the top five. Uh, we're gonna start with Refractor. This I picked up earlier this year uh, in a trade, and this was a really good pickup. I'd never had these this mold, the, the Siege Reflector mold, and to get it in the box set, was really really nice it has this great little camera mode and it fits in on my diaclone shelf which still isn't done but yeah siege uh refractor siege box set refractor really really good figure starting us off strong i guess we'll just knock all the diaclone guys out of the way now these two kind of eat up a slot together and that is deep cover and tiger track i really like these guys they're off the siege sideswipe mold and both of their colors are just really, really nice. I think you'll be happy with either version of this, whether it be the, the deep cover or the tiger track. Either way, these are some of the best uses of the sideswipe tooling. I did, like I mentioned, get a lot of Diaclone this year, and another one is Crosscut. This kind of kickstarted my love for the Skids mold. I really, really like Crosscut. He's a lot of fun, his tolerances are really good, and yeah, man. I mean, if you don't if you don't have crosscut, go get crosscut. He's so good. This is like, th like the second best use of this mold. But we'll we'll talk about that later. But yeah, crosscut, man, so good. And I'll I'll quit glazing diaclone right after this one. But uh, shattered glass ultra Magnus. I didn't think I was gonna like this as much as I did, but I ended up really really enjoying it. I like the Magna convoy on the inside. I don't like the dog hair that's on it. I really like the colors here. He just looks really really good and something about him man it just really stands out to me these colors so yeah a shatter glass magnus he's he's a winner in my book probably the smallest guy on this list and rounding us out into the top 10 this is spy changer scourge i love spy changer scourge he is so much fun he is so cute he fits in your pocket he's a little hot wheel car he fits inside of fortress maximus the titans return one or the original one you know whichever whichever yeah, he's just a lot of fun, and I really, really like him. Spy Changer Scourge, man. If you can find him for, like, ten bucks, pick him up. He's a lot, a lot of fun. Okay, now we're going to start kind of ranking these by how much enjoyment I get out of them. And next up is Rail Racer! I finished my Rail Racer this year, and I love him. I love Rail Racer so much. This is such a good toy, such a fun combiner but I don't get as much enjoyment out of him as some of my other stuff that I got this year. He is really good and he is really fun, but there's a lot of things about him that are really awkward. He has really long arms that are flat and wide. His hips don't quite, you know, they don't ratchet in to the degrees that I want them to. He has no ankle tilt, which I know he's an RID01 toy, but it is one of those things. I'm used to modern comforts and he does not have all the modern comforts, but he is still an amazing combiner and if you find him for cheap if you find this guy for like a hundred bucks highly recommend highly recommend rail racer if you can get him for cheap i know this figure gets a lot of flack but i actually really enjoyed generations windblade i i got this and the other windblade this year the legacy one and i gotta admit i like this one a lot more yeah she doesn't have ankle tilts but she has a permanent sculpted like a stance and is just a good looking windblade like when i think of windblade this is what i think of and like she stands fine shout out to maka for fixing all the joint issues and the head sculpt it's grown on me i didn't initially like this head sculpt but it looks okay it looks pretty good i like her scabbard with her correct sword and not the weird flamey sword so yeah everything about this windblade really really speaks to me and it looks great with my chromia in my collection like it works for me because this is how i like this is how i imagine windblade and i imagine chromia as the throwing 31 so it all works together to, for that aesthetic that I have in my collection for the Fembots. So yeah, Windblade. I don't know if I'd call this a sleeper hit, but definitely a surprise, and that is Cybertron Starscream. I adore Cybertron Starscream. This was such a good reveal, and he was revealed, and then he came out like two weeks later. Like I, I remember not waiting very long for this guy whenever we were first teased him. It felt like he was out like next week. It was crazy. But yeah, no, Cybertron Starscream, man. 
I got this guy when Target was having their big sale, like with like 30 or 40% off. So I got this guy for less than the price of a deluxe, which probably helps like my case for enjoying this dude. But he has everything you'd want him to. He has the cyber key, he has a rifle, he has the flip out arm blades. He has insane articulation and a decent transformation with a fun vehicle mode. I really like him. I adore this figure. If you haven't picked up Cybertron Starscream or really any of the legacy Cybertron guys, you're missing out because they are absolutely fantastic. A little shocked that I enjoyed this more than Starscream, but Road Pig from the Star Seekers capsule is great. And I think I lean towards the Luxes because they're a little bit more hand sized. They're a little bit more pocketable. And of course they're cheaper, but Road Pig takes a mold that I was kind of lukewarm on. You know, Crash Bar is a cool toy, but you know, you take it and you put it in black and red, you give it that goth color scheme and you give it a cool ninja, whoa, you give it a cool ninja face. It's awesome. It's so cool. It also helps that he's part pirate, you know, he's on the pirate team and like ninjas and pirates and cowboys and samurai, like all that's really cool. I love the clear pipes here. I love the, the half translucent head. It's just a great toy, man. These are some fantastic colors on this. So if, if you see this guy or you find him online, pick him up, man. He is so, so good. Lots of fun with Road Pig. And closing us out before the top five, it's Iron Factory Ruination. This was supposed to go on my top 10 of last year, but he's gonna go right here in the rounding us out before the top five of this year. The only thing that really holds him back, yeah, he's third party and he's old and expensive and hard to get, but some of the figures are hard to transform. Some of them are really difficult to transform. So I, I'm gonna put him here right before top five, but he is still absolutely fantastic and about half the price of the Takara one, so I'll take this any day of the week, especially when this one scales with Rail Racer and Build King. All right, top five, and this one's gonna be a controversial one. I know people are gonna expect this to be higher. It's Yellow Splendid. Yellow Splendid was never not gonna be on this list. She was always gonna be in this list. She was always gonna be in the top five, but the question was, where was it gonna go? This thing had such a journey. Me and me and Yellow Splendid had such a journey together, and I'm I'm really glad I was able to put this uh, this awesome piece of like Transformers history back together from just finding the torso and the the little hand blaster to getting the uh, the chest and feet and one of the shoulder pads from one guy to another dude on Instagram helping me find the gloves and then another dude on Facebook hooking me up with both shoulder pads. Everything about this was such a collaborative effort. By the way, if anyone knows where to get some missiles for this girl, let me know. And the wheels are still intact. I am so happy I was able to put this together. And this is su this was such a milestone figure for my channel. I love Yellow Splendid. Number five, such a fun toy. Number four is another recent figure. I think all of these are recent, more recent figures than, than everything else on the list. And that's gonna go to Leader Sandstorm. This is how you do a Leader Triple Changer. He has so many features that are so different from every other leader, from the leg sliders to the functioning wench. It's so interesting. He is so cool and his triple changing is really nice. He has those rubberized tires that are really cool and slick and just make him feel like a premium figure. And he's heavy too, he is, he's dense. So yeah, Sandstorm, man. Like I know this guy showed up really briefly at stores. Like he was kind of hard to find or hard to obtain because he, I don't think he ever got restocked. I think he was really just like in a one wave and they never shipped that wave back out. But yeah, he is, he's absolutely great. So if you see him, get him. If you find him for a uh, leader or less price, definitely worth it. Cause leader Sandstorm is the best legacy leader that we have gotten. Now this slot was gonna go to someone else, but then a better version showed up. This was going to be Cyberverse Tarn. I had Cyberverse Tarn written down on the list of top 15 figures for a little bit now, and then Bludgeon shows up and blows that Tarn out of the water. This is everything I wanted Bludgeon to be. It is fantastic, it is gorgeous, it is wonderful colors, it has the perfect head sculpt, has the new chest, it has zero clear plastic. It's what I wanted from a Tarn Bludgeon mold. And yeah, this delivers Cyberverse Tarn, close second, but this this takes it slot easily. I enjoy this more, has less issues other than the, the little blasters, but I had a friend say that, oh yeah, those are supposed to come off. They're five millimeter compatible. And I was like, oh, that's crazy. So don't even need them, take them off. Who cares? Bludgeon. Number two, I, I brewed about for a bit. I was wondering who's gonna be the number two? Who's the runner up? I think it came down to someone who I always knew it was gonna be, and it's Cannonball. I adore 
Cannonball. Now, I, there's a lot of history between me and this Cannonball right here. There's a lot of history between me and Cannonball from me having the original toy to making a post on and tagging all the designers like, hey, Crankcase exists. He's been existing for like a year. Can we please get a Cannonball off it? To almost a year to the day from me making that post, us getting this officially revealed. Or maybe it was leaked. I don't know. I forget. But we saw Cannonball about a year after I, uh, after I posted about him and getting him in hand and all the tolerances are perfect. He's off one of my favorite legacy molds, that being the skids mold. He has all the functionality that you'd want him to from the shoulder cannons to the cyber key to the leg storage to the blaster hand and it's blast effect compatible. And you can take the cyber key out, you can take the thing off so that way he looks more like the Comic Con version. Everything about this cannonball is fantastic. The only thing that really brings him down are the Vox skulls. But there's a toy hacks kit and I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about it. Don't you worry, I've been looking at it. So yeah. Cannonball. I don't think there was any world where he wasn't the second slot. So what is my number one? What's my toy of 2024? Now, I've mentioned this multiple times in my Discord server, and I've mentioned it a few times, but yeah, there. this guy is absolutely amazing. It is Voyager Animated Optimus Prime. I love this figure. I got this figure in hand, and it is easily the best Voyager we've gotten in so long. It is so accurate to the Transformers animated design. It looks exactly like Animated Prime. Comes with his crazy, super accurate, like, axe weapon that extends. His transformation is so different and so fun and so clever. He has swivel wrists that are on ball joints. He has double jointed elbows. He has more than 90 knees, like crazy knee articulation. He has that sweet chest bend. He is just such, he has a double jointed neck, man. There is so much to love about this animated prime. He also has the forward and back on the ankles with the side to side. Like everything about this figure is absolutely peak. This is what peak Voyager looks like. I don't care what you say. This is what a peak Voyager is. The more than 90 knees, the anime stance, the double jointed elbows, the accurate accessories and proportions while still fitting in to a legacy aesthetic. He is him. This is the toy of the year. So there you have it. That is my top 15 of 2024. Lots of really good gets this year. Lots of really good figures this year. We had the end of Legacy Evolution. We had the beginning of Legacy United. And we also got the wonderful Star Seekers capsule and the Mayhem and Destruction capsule. This was a fantastic year for Transformers. One of the best in my opinion. Lots of variety and lots of things for everyone to enjoy from all swaths of the Transformers fandom. Let me know what your top figure of the year was. Let me know what you thought about my top 15. Don't forget to check out the support links in the description and I'll see you in the next video. This has been Bots Obsession.